Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, Ajay sir. Welcome, everyone. We'll be uh, starting in two, three minutes. Okay, ma'am. Okay.
good evening all of you good evening ajay sir welcome to the session uh, thank you for joining everyone uh, i hope you all know that this year we are celebrating the 75th uh, year of adoption of the udhr that is universal declaration of human rights and that is why this year we have the theme that is uh, dignity freedom and justice for all so uh, through department of law central university of karnataka this is just a small initiative to sensitize uh, people regarding the human rights i welcome you sir again um, i hope you all know that uh, why do we celebrate or why do we cherish this human rights this is absolute and universal this, uh, unrestricted human rights which is given to everyone uh, irrespective of being gen gender region religion caste or anything everybody gets equal right everybody gets this right by uh, birth itself uh, i welcome you all again and i'll uh, Uh, sorry for the interruption um uma bharti please continue the session she will be introducing our speaker today yes yes the session chair myself uma bharti uh, on the on behalf of department of law in central university of karnataka uh, i Uma Bharti, you are not audible. Can you please be loud? I'll bring your speak mic closer. Hello. Yes, Uma, you are not audible. Now, now I am audible. Yeah. Okay. Yes, better. Okay, wait. Yes, Uma, you continue. Kindly unmute, Vinarasi. You are kindly unmute and then speak. Yes, Uma, you continue. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, good evening, honorable present here. Myself, Uma Bharati. Uh, on behalf of Department of Law, School of Legal Jurisprudence Studies, we are conducting a lecture series relating to the human rights. And today, the topic of human uh, rights lecture series is human rights education for duty-oriented society. And without any delay or something, I'll let me introduce our today's lecture. Uh, today's extreme speaker, um, Mr. Dr. Ajay Sonavade, sir. Um, I, it's my pleasure to introduce you, sir. Uh, Star completed his LLB uh, and LLM from ILS Law College. Star has awarded with gold medal in the subject of law of contracts and in LLM from Sabtribai Pule Pune University. Star has been awarded PhD in law, for, law from Department of Law in Savitribai Pule University itself, and SAR has served as Teaching Associate uh, associate of Human Rights Education Program and Department of Law in Savitribai Pule University, and SAR has also served as Assistant Professor in Tata Institute of Social Science, Mumbai. SAR has organized and presented papers in various national and international seminars, and published articles in reputed journals, chapters, uh, chapters in edited book and also edited a book. Uh, and presently, Sar is working as an assistant professor at Faculty of Law in the University of Delhi. On behalf of School of Legal Jurisprudence and Department of Law, I warmly welcome you, sir, and warmly welcome you, everyone. Hope this session will more informative to you all. And now I request to the speaker, Dr. Ms. Mr. Ajay, Ajay, sir, to continue this session. Thank you so much.
okay okay thank you vinarasi for this uh, generous in introduction and uh, good evening one and all uh, my name is ajay and uh, today we are going to uh, have the discussion on the topic uh, which we have on this occasion of uh, human rights day that lecture series which we have organized so so the first of all i would like to thank the uh, department of law school of jurisprudence studies central university of karnataka for giving this opportunity uh, before i begin with the session i'll just like to uh, just share my screen so uh, this will be visible to you uh, in a while okay so uh, the topic uh, what we have uh, selected for this discussion today is the human rights education for duty oriented society so as on the recently on 10th December, we have celebrated that was done in the year 1948 and now we have about to complete the or we are about to begin with the 75th year of uh, international human rights day and even the uh you can say the, the responsibility or the accountability or even the uh the duty that we need to understand that because in the last you can say 74 years after which the recognition got with this document that's called universal declaration of human rights wherein we have emphasized more upon the rights of an individual we have focused more upon the how an individual can get their rights how they can enjoy their rights but at the same time we need to focus more upon the duty as well because unless and until we do not uh, recognize our duties unless and until we do not understand our duties then the another individual might not able to exercise his rights in better way so so in this uh, discussion as i think uh, your lecture series which has been started since i think this made this is your second course or second day of lecture and you must have heard about the basic foundation of human rights wherein the human rights basically derives from the natural law and natural rights theories and this is being a school of jurisprudence studies i'm sure that uh, this uh, concept of natural law or natural rights theory through the jurisprudential perspective you all might have uh, recognized or must have understood so wherein the human rights yes it is the source or which which has came not only from the united nation or its documents but the beginning or the you can say the starting of human rights can be traced from the beginning of the human civilization or even from the moment human being came into existence since that moment we can say that the rights or the law pertaining to human rights that came into existence so where the natural law theory as you know that which is the uh, first theory in the jurisprudence of law that we generally study and which is nothing but the essence wherein the morality was the essence of natural law theory and in this natural law theory whatever that has uh, we have received from the nature whatever we have got from the nature that we are basically trying to recognize and protect and human rights or the rights of an individual uh, in different form are nothing but the you can say the outcome of this nature or it is the gift from the nature that which has uh, which is there for every individual irrespective of whatever the caste creed race etc so the human rights or especially the natural law theory or natural rights theory are primarily based upon two important principles, which is nothing but the universal order governing all men and inalienable rights of an individual. So these two principles, that is universal order governing all men and inalienable right of an individual. These two principles are as though, however, they are the principle of natural law theory, but these two principles are nothing but the you can say the foundation of the human rights theory also because the, the the idea of human rights through the international law which we understand which has given the uh you can say the uh, as a individual as a subject of international law such kind of recognition but prior to that even natural law theory has mentioned about the whatever the naturally which we have received maybe through law through the rights through the society then this needs to be recognized protected and enforced by the law so universality or inalienability are the two principles which we even uh, you can say the keep in our mind when we talk about the human rights when we discuss about the, this human rights and duties so 
universality as as uh, even the uh, ragini ma'am also, also has mentioned initially that universality or inalienability in is something which is there when we talk about human rights so whenever you go with respect of any country or any society then your basic rights as a human rights will be always with the, will be with you and in eligibility the rights which you which are something which you cannot transfer which you cannot wave off so there are certain rights which are there for every individual and they cannot transfer they cannot wave those rights so therefore those rights cannot be taken away without any due process and when we talk about rights then obviously rights involves this human rights involves not only rights but it also involves certain duties and certain obligation that every individual has to perform every individual has to keep in mind when they are you can say the performing or when we they are living in the you can say the culturally matured democratic society because the democratic society is there definitely for the all the individual or the people but that democratic society will be called as the mature democratic society then and then only when we understand our duties we perform our duties and that's why my focus is more upon the duty based society that how we can build up and human rights education is such a mode which through which we can achieve this duty based society so the when we talk about the protection of human rights then it is not only the duty of the states that to protect the individual rights yes we have different uh, uh, institutions we have different laws rules but it is also the individuals who has certain responsibility for the protection of rights of an individual so therefore respect protect or even fulfill human rights it's, it is also the duty of the individuals and not only the states and so therefore human rights and duties of individuals which the point which i have referred here that is nothing but talking about the the individual has rights as well as duties so he cannot just focus upon his own rights but he shall also focus upon their duties unless and until you discharge the duties the you cannot enjoy or once another individual cannot enjoy his right in a more you can say dignified manner so so this is what you can say the philosophy behind this but the first recognition which has received to this human rights that is after the second world war where in the uh, there was a uh, you can say the individual who has suffered the civilians who suffered but the united nation as an organization who came together and uh, they have contributed to the establishment of this uh, united nation organization plus the you can say the to maintain the peace and security the this institution was established and they have come with certain documents that is the universal declaration of human rights 1948 which is the first you can say primary document which uh, has given the recognition it is to this human rights law in a legal manner then we have uh, if you focus briefly that how is the journey of human rights law so so, so in a you can say legislative perspective or through the documentation perspective then in the first document that is magna carta was the first document which has uh, not only uh, you can, the, the aim of magna carta if you have heard that it was not uh, there uh, just as a document or just for the sake of uh, you can say rules or regulation for the individuals but this magna carta document was more towards the duty perspective as well wherein the the king or the authorities of the state cannot impose the illegal taxes they cannot impose the taxes which are imposed upon the individuals and due to which the money or the revenue which was generating which, that was generated in an illegal manner so magna carta was such document which has basically recognized the certain rights or basic interest of the individual and at the same time duties of the state that they shall not impose the taxes in an illegal manner so magna carta was the first document however they have not mentioned about human rights as a term but they recognize certain rights of the individuals and after that in different countries like us uk france there were certain documents definitely that established for the or that was introduced or that was adopted for the purpose of recognition of human rights in this legal term but the united nation organization was the first organization which has bring which has brought all the different nation states together and they formed uh, you can say one aim they brought one aim or, or goal for the maintenance of peace and security and even for the sake of protection and promotion of human rights of all the individuals 
and through which they plan one guideline. that is the Universal of Human Rights, which was adopted on 10 December 1948. And as you know, that it is not enforceable in the court of law. But this declaration gave the recognition of certain basic rights, which are already in existence in the society, which are already in existence in the state. Only the document was the, you can say, such a mode or such a medium to which we just try to recognize those rights and put into a law and then you can ultimately a moral responsibility of the different nation states that to strive for them, to protect them, to enforce them, to give the certain kind of guarantee to all the individuals. So declaration became a guideline principle for all the other nation states. Even if you talk about Indian constitution, the chapters like fundamental rights or chapters like directive principle of state policy or fundamental duties, these are nothing but somewhere has uh, like you no know, impact of this UDHR over these particular chapters. So UDHR is something which is definitely an important document. And then this got the legal recognition wherein the certain enforceability, certain compulsion, certain bindingness through the two important documents that is ICCPR and ICSCR. So in the year 1966, so civil and political rights and economic, social, cultural rights. So moving ahead now, when we talk about now, human rights, this was the brief introduction, but moving on, that why in the year of this 2022, still there are, in spite of having United Nations, in spite of having different laws, still there are certain concerns of human rights and which we have to focus upon, which we have to look upon and how it can be resolved, those concerns, on those issues or challenges, how it can be resolved. So. When we talk about human rights, what is the basic human rights of any individual it is nothing but the access to justice, because access to justice is something that every individual, whoever face certain challenges, whoever, whoever face certain violation uh, in their life, maybe of different reasons, maybe of number of reasons, then how he can get the access to his, you no know, access to the justice, how he can get access to those, uh, you can see institutions which are available for it. But what are the reasons that due to which he suffered certain violation? Or what are the reasons due to which he suffered that challenges? Then these are certain concerns that we need to uh, understand as a human being. We need to recognize as a human being because physical or emotional injury. So physical or emotional injury wherein the, you must have uh, seen certain uh, vulnerable or disadvantaged groups in the society wherein they do face different challenges such as vulnerable or disadvantaged i mean that uh individual who are maybe a woman or maybe a children or maybe a, a woman especially like the for example who are pro, uh, practicing or you can say having the profession of for example prostitute then they do come across certain physical or emotional injury and which actually as an uh, important concern when we talk about the human rights because even they do have certain human rights and even you must have seen uh, the victim of unnecessary criticism so for example a prostitute as a as they are uh you no know, performing their different uh, you can say the work but at the same time they are doing it for their family they are doing it for their children and that also they also possess the human rights as a human being but still they face certain unnecessary criticism for the same then there are certain vulnerable groups and disadvantaged groups in the society, maybe indigenous individual, indigenous people or tribal people. Because if you, uh, as a, because when I I, uh, I was a part of this uh, certain projects in the TIS, then or Tata Institute of Social Sciences, then we personally, which we, we have observed that the in the tribal areas, if you visit, then you, you will realize that those tribal people, they are not literally aware that what is constitution or what is law we have or what kind of basic rights we have. It may be about the documentation such as the uh, Aadhaar card or such as the document like you know, election card or such documents of their own identity. These are certain simple factors, even they are not well aware about it. Even the, the people in the slums area, they are also not aware about what are the rights, what are the interests they have as a human being. So. The challenging in the court of law and the approaching to the court of law is a different thing. But recognizing or having the knowledge about those rights is also a big challenge. 
then lack of developmental opportunity and illiteracy again this is another important concern for the uh, no uh, you can say better exercise of the your human rights and when we talk about violation of individual and collective interest then yes there are as uh, you must have studied the roscoe bond theory where in the social engineering theory then there are certain rights that which has been discussed and those rights are nothing but under the social engineering theory wherein we talk about certain interest and there is a when there is a conflict of interest then one interest that you no know, overtake another interest so wherein individual or state or collective interest wherein the the violation that for example when we talk about collective interest then in today's era that even now presently we have seen different environmental challenges wherein the people are facing issues such as no maybe the covid issue or apart from that even uh, air in today's era like in north india or even in the state like no wherein there is a, a different environmental changes that we have seen climate change we have seen or environmental challenges which we are looking at so these are nothing but the collective interest that is getting affected and even the individuals being a part of that collective interest may not aware about their rights and how to go about it so therefore and even apart from that the discrimination it may be a direct or indirect yes even the vulnerable or disadvantaged groups they do face certain discrimination in their daily life and that also in the nature of treating them as less favorably or also easily exposed them to the societal risk and also the practicing a particular to put into a specific disadvantaged situation so so these are certain human rights concerns which we have and those human rights concerns are there how we still when we have such different uh, rights or you have when we have a different laws or documents now when we talk about these concerns then what are the exactly rights we have and how those rights can be reached towards the uh, for its better exercise, exercise exercise or how these rights in case if they are getting violated then which are the better institution we have so as a citizen because when we talk about citizen and when we talk about individual those these two concept are very different because when you are individual then you have a identity as an individual irrespective of any caste creed country etc but the moment you term or use it term citizenship then you belong to a particular country you belong to a particular nation state and according to civil political social that may get you can say shaped or that come into a proper uh, meaning so therefore when we talk about civil rights then it includes the rights necessary for individual freedom that is liberty freedom of speech thought faith right to own property or conclude valid contracts or the right to justice and which is the institution which closely work for the protection of civil rights it is nothing but the courts of justice then we have a political rights such as participation in the government or participation in the political power and for that purpose we have a parliament or the council of local government and when it comes to the social rights that is right to modicum of economic welfare or security that is then we have a educational system or social services or government institution which basically work for the protection of these rights which are institution which closely work but now uh, in spite of having all these rights what is important that we are focusing today is the duty part because however we have these duties but the uh, rights but at the same time we need to understand that as an individual we need to perform certain duties and in the jurisprudence of uh, this professor herald laski was one of the renowned jurist so who has basically tried to interrelate these two concept together that is rights and duties so when he has says that that one's right implies others duty so when i have a right to speak then at the same time another individual has certain duty to listen or if another individual is speaking somewhere then i have a right to listen i have a duty to listen the same so one's right implies the other other's duty then that is from the individual to individual perspective then there is a second that one's right implies one's duty to recognize the similar rights of others so when we talk about right to equality or right to freedom of speech and expression or right to religion then as a individual i have certain rights it is my duty that i should recognize that even other individual has his own 
right to religion he has also right to freedom right to equality etc so one's right implies others duty and one's rights implies one's duty to recognize the similar rights of others because when we talk about what is exactly duty look as a duty what exactly we have to perform then this is what is expected that our inculcation of uh, you can say thoughts or process it should be in such a manner that we should recognize that even we have a right even similar rights are there to the other individual then further one should exercise his rights for the promotion of social good so it is not only the it is the relationship of rights and duties is between the individuals the relationship of rights and duties is with the individual as well as it is with the society or state as well so as an individual as a human being he should exercise his rights for the promotion of social good and not to create any disturbance not to create any you can say society not to put a society into any risk so that other individual might suffer a certain problem and as a state guarantee or protect the rights of everybody then one has a duty to support the state so whenever state that strive or work towards the protection of rights and duties of indi any individual then every individual has certain duty to support the state and to assist the state so even the directive principle is the uh, best example for that in that context so duty perspective or when we focus upon that yes as an individual we need to perform our duties that about the recognition of other rights or even to uh, working toward the promotion of social good or also supporting the state then as a human rights context that which we are discussing today or as a human rights subject which we are discussing today then there is a thought or there is a certain guidelines or there are certain you can say uh, principles which has been laid down by the united nation to this concept of human rights education now the concept of human rights education which we are emphasizing here this concept of human rights education which is basically focusing upon certain areas wherein as a human being or as an individual what exactly we can contribute in the society for its betterment what exactly we can do for the benefits of the society so therefore in this era the human rights education is in such area wherein we have seen that there are certain individuals such as as i mentioned that it may be the people from the rural areas maybe people from the uh, tribal areas it may be people who are maybe in the nature of disab disabled people or maybe women or children or the migrant worker who are facing different challenges and they are not having the knowledge about their rights they are not having knowledge about what rights and duties they have so herein the human rights education that basically makes them or empower them that what are the rights we have what are the duties that we need to perform and what are the uh, no institution or the mechanism which we have wherein we can exercise our basic right of access to justice so knowledge versus awareness the point wherein that if you have knowledge then definitely you can use it for yourself as well as this knowledge can be used for the another one or for the benefits of the another individual for the recognition or protection of their rights then also that inculcation of democratic and social justice principle that is nothing but obviously that wherein being a part of democracy that our duty is not only that to to know pay the taxes or even to contribute to the state but also it is a duty that even that contribution should be meaningful it should be participatory and for that purpose the individual need to take certain action individual needs to perform certain duties so that if every individual perform the duty of uh, themselves then obviously there won't be any uh, you can say uh, 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 issue or there won't be any platform we would require that to have the uh, to challenge or to exercise our rights so every individual when he recognize that other individual also has certain rights certain you can say the interest certain claims then there won't be any dispute there won't be any challenges so therefore the rights or the democratic or social justice principle may be in the nature of moral principle or may be in the nature of legal principle so both that values should be performed that value should be recognized then our basic uh, 
document when we talk about art if you go through the article 26 of the universal declaration of human rights wherein you will directly find that it also clearly mentioned that everyone has a right to education that should strengthen respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms so even the udhr as a basic law of the land for the human rights in the human rights context which has article 26 which has clearly talked about the right to education towards what towards the strengthening the respect of for human rights and fundamental freedoms so these things basically we need to inculcate we need to understand and we need to know remember while we are a part of society while we are living in this democratic society and plus the maintenance of peace and security or even the declaration of the rights of child and also the plan of action of united nation which we are discussing further which has basically has strived towards the human rights education so that we can have the better society we can have the people in the society which has a certain knowledge about the human rights now coming to this uh, plan of action of united nation then where we can locate this human rights education in the uh, international law or especially in the law of united nation wherein they have come up with different kind of uh, you can say documents or different laws so first thing that if you see the sustainable development goal that is sdg S sdg wherein the 2030 that we need to achieve wherein it talks about the goal number four or the target seven that talks about the inclusive and equitable quality education now inclusive and equitable quality education is nothing but aimed towards the obviously that everyone because education is something that as a as a student of you can say law or as a as a student of this uh, maybe the course of llm or phd or llb we definitely understand that when we get this legal education then that basically helps us to understand between what is right what is rational what is wrong what is incorrect what is reasonable so this kind of analytical skills that this kind of analysis that basically helps us to live in the society in a better manner or you can say in a, as a better human being because ultimately when we talk about as a human being we possess certain rights so but for that purpose we also have to behave as a human being we have to show certain humanity towards each other and then and then only that you can say the reflection will be there in the society in which is in a very peaceful manner so the inclusive and equitable quality education is basically something that is necessary when we talk about the uh, promotion or protection of human rights and that 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 quality education in in the quality education one of the element of human rights education is very important because the uh, in the United Nations, the Vienna Declaration and Program Action in the year 1994, wherein the uh, the United Nations has prepared a particular definition of human rights education. What exactly we are trying to emphasize towards this concept of human rights education, and what exactly we are trying to aim through this this concept of human rights education. So when it says that the training, dissemination, and information efforts aimed at the building of a universal culture of human rights so the universality the principle of this natural law it still plays an important role because however you are a part of any country or any religion any caste but still the culture that we have to build which is the uni uni uniform one and everyone that is equally applicable universal so training dissemination and information efforts aimed at the building of a universal culture of human rights through the imparting of knowledge and skills and the molding of attitudes and directed to so so in what part that we have to understand that first that the, the strengthening of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms and the full development of the human personality and the sense of its dignity then promotion of understanding tolerance gender equality friendship among all the nations indigenous peoples and rational sorry and the racial uh, national ethnic religious linguistic groups and the un and the enabling of all persons to participate effectively in a free society 
and the furtherance of activities of United Nations for maintenance of peace. Now, if you look at this definition of human rights education, wherein the, the areas such as the standing, the respect, or development of human personality, or promotion and understanding of different principles like gender equality, friendship, etc., and participation, effective participation. So if you look at these principles minutely, then wherever in whichever institution you are, in whichever institution you may work, it may be legal profession, it may be judicial profession, it may be corporate, or it may be educational institution. Then if you inculcate such principles in your daily routine, or if you inculcate such principle that to giving a respect to the another individual, or even to uh, having the principles such as equality, friendship among all the nations, not only among all the nations, but even between the individuals or indigenous people, and not to make any difference on the basis of linguistic, caste, creed, then this will definitely prepare a society which actually aiming towards the, you can say, better, uh, you can say, society which is we required or which we imagine in this uh, democratic form in this democratic uh, culture that we have in for example even in india so so this uh, definition of human rights education basically is not only essential from the institution point of view but this is also as a duty of every individual so even apart from that if you look at the different united nations documents that we have uh, which is udhr is definitely one of the basic or fundamental document and after which there are several documents which has been adopted by the United Nations through the General Assembly. And this is just a brief uh, list of documents. So this is just a brief list of certain articles which has basically emphasized about, about the education of human rights of different nature, like respective areas. So such as if you go through the Article 10 of the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, so there is nothing but the CEDA. So Article 10 of the CEDA Convention that you know, gives certain responsibility over the state that state parties shall take all the appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination. And how that can be achieved? That will be achieved through certain education or through certain uh, education program that can be introduced in their curriculum or in the different areas, such as the, the conditions for career and vocational guidance or for access to studies or for the achievement of diplomas in education establishment of all categories in rural areas the equality shall be ensured in preschool technical professional or higher technical education as well as in all types of training so even the curriculum which is framed even that curriculum shall give the equal opportunity and also that curriculum shall inculcate certain principles which can encourage them to respect and even to uh, protect the rights of other individuals and even the CEDO, for example. So those who are uh, well versed with the provisions of CEDO, then obviously you must have uh, heard the case of Ishakawa State of Rajasthan, wherein the how this CEDO Convention has basically assisted to the judiciary to come to prepare certain guidelines, which later became the uh, assistance for the woman to protect them from the sexual harassment at the workplace, and then that turn into the law in the year 2014. So, so from either in from the year 1997 to 2014. So guideline was the primary basis wherein the they were used in the private institution, also in the public institution for the protection of women from the sexual harassment at the workplace. Then there are certain articles, such as Article 7 of the uh racial discrimination convention, then article 13 of the ICESCR, that is Economic, Social, Cultural Rights. Then Article 10 of the Convention Against Torture, Other Cruel, Inhuman and Degrading Treatment or Punishment. Then even these articles are basically articles wherein the, they has focused towards the education and they have focused towards the human rights education as a sense of responsibility, as a sense of full development of the human personality, which can inculcate certain dignity, respect, or you can say a freedom of other individuals, recognition of the same. So, so when you go through this article, then you will understand that this article has certainly has you no know, given the focus upon the duties of the state and also the duty of the individual to recognize the right of education of every individual, irrespective of their identities, irrespective of their 
uh, nationality because identities and nationalities again both are different things so so once if you get a time you can also go through these articles which has basically has focused towards the human rights education also the education which is in the nature of human rights now uh, now this is something very important wherein the now uh, when we talk about the articles and etc then what exactly united nation has planned towards the is uh, actual implementation or towards his actual promotion so if you look at certain phases of human rights uh, education then in the year 2011 wherein the united nation has come up with certain declaration united nation has come up with certain ideas on the protection of human rights education and training if you go through this declaration then you will find that it has come up with certain principles certain guidelines that how as a curriculum or how as a individual maybe when he is a child maybe he is as a in the age of his his you can say childhood how we can inculcate certain principle of human rights so that when they are becoming the no asset for any nation in future when they are going to become the asset for any society any institution then how they can contribute in with the sense of certain responsibility with the sense of certain uh you can say uh no this respect towards the rights of other individuals so united nation declaration on this human rights education and training that definitely has been adopted in the year 2011 and this declaration aimed to provide the knowledge skill and understanding of this universal culture of human rights so as an individual that irrespective of any country irrespective of any nation irrespective of any state then it provides the certain attitude it prepare or it you can say shape certain attitude and behavior to empower the individual to contribute towards the better society in the future if you go through the section article 7 of this uh, this declaration that basically affirms that state and wherever the applicable of relevant authorities have the primary responsibility to promote and ensure the human rights education and the training and and also that it says that it should create a safe and enabling environment for the engagement of civil society and the private sector and other relevant stakeholders okay so article 7 if you go through of this declaration you will find that how the thought process has been given and then it is the duty of municipal nation or even the individual should uh, work towards it now this united nation has basically initially started this plan of human rights education in these four phases that is in the first phase they try to inculcate this integration of this human rights education in the primary and second school system so so from the school level itself the, the you can say the subject like human rights can be introduced in the curriculum in the syllabus and the individual as a as an individual as a student as a child will try to understand the certain basic principles like chapter like fundamental rights or fundamental duties or even the chapters like uh, uh, directive principle of state policy can be introduced to the students or even the preamble can be introduced to the students and even certain rights of the uh, international level in a you can say in a uh, uh video through the videos or through some design or through some uh, posters that can be introduced to the students because they should understand that they have certain rights they have certain interests and to become a better person in the society tomorrow they should understand those rights those duties then in the second phase it was recognized that the focus that the higher education and human rights training for teachers, educators, civil servants, law enforcement officials, and military persons at all levels. So, just to give an example, that uh, the university which I uh, uh, completed my education, wherein the Savitri Bai Phule Pune University, wherein you will find that there is an exclusive course which has been introduced in the year 2011 during the same phase, which was the aim of United Nations and India being a party of United Nations. The governor of Maharashtra has, uh, in the year 2011, has introduced one the course of this uh, human rights education, and this course has become now compulsory for the all the stream of the Pune University, irrespective of it, maybe physics, chemistry, science, maths, or arts, etc. So, for every every student of this university, of this post graduation student, has 
this compulsory course on human rights wherein they have to complete certain modules on the human rights and wherein the irrespective of any branch you are you will have to go through those laws you will have to go through those rules you will have you will have to go through those case studies just being a member of the society because as a member of society if we understand our rights as a member of society if you understand our duties then it are automatically going to be reflected in your daily routine so if you are going to join any particular institution for sake of work for example or as a student of any institution then what are your rights what exactly rights or the issues you can discuss with your office staff and you can get your work done because you have the knowledge of your rights so the second phase was primarily towards the inculcation of this human rights education through the curriculum of higher education and the universities or the colleges and not only that even the civil servants law enforcement officials and the military personnel who should aware about the human rights so this human rights education which i mean not only about the laws of united nation but the laws of country so such as as a country we have constitution as a basic law of the land so in the constitution three important chapters like the fundamental rights direct principle of state policy and the fundamental duties so as a individual every sh everyone should have that you can say the uh, every individual or every citizen of india should be aware about those rights what is what are those chapters in this picture of whatever stream he may belong so because that is something has got to every individual or that is there with every individual it is not the constitution because of which we have got our rights the constitution has merely recognized one prior to the constitution so constitution has come just to guarantee those rights so if you uh, go through the any article of direct principle of state policy or even the uh, fundamental rights wherein it says that the state guarantees it does it never says that state provides you these rights or duties that state guarantees those rights so therefore second phase was primarily focusing upon the human rights education uh, or training through this higher education or the uh, you can say through the uh, universities and the other officials the third phase came wherein it focused on the implementation of the first two phases phases promoting human rights training for the media professional and journalist so as a media wherein we call it as a fourth pillar of democracy even they should have certain sense of responsibility certain sense of accountability certain sense of professional morality when they are going to act as a media professional as a journalist in the society even they should recognize that when they have a certain rights to express their opinion then even other individual also has a right to has have a right of certain dignity certain respect so therefore the third phase of human rights is basically striving towards the promotion of human rights education for the better media professional or for the better journalist who has the sense of their own duties for the protection of the others human rights and the fourth phase which is the recent that is in the year 2020 which has been introduced and in the next 5 years they are trying to focus on the youth empowerment through the human rights education because in the world at the present scenario or like even in india when the youth is more in number youth has more as as a more percentage of number in the total population so if the youth get trained about the human rights education youth get trained about their basic rights maybe fundamental rights or duties or the direct principle of state policy if they get training about their basic uh claims or basic desires how they can be accessed then obviously that will going to helpful for next 20 or 25 years because that will actually give the a uh, better citizens or better individuals for the development or growth of the country so therefore education is not only necessary for the degree purpose or for the your job purpose but education basically develop your own personality and if you get the education from as a this human rights education then you are going to be a good contributor in the society for its better growth or better development so in the end i would just like to conclude by saying that education helps to understand a duty based realization of human beings and existence of rights 
So if we understand our rights, if we understand our duties, then we are basically going to balance both of them and going to contribute better in the society for its future development. Then this human rights education basically strives to impart the skills, techniques, values, knowledge, moral behavior to handle the different human rights challenges which hampers the society while living together. So when we have a sense of our duties, if we maintain the right, respect, dignity of other individuals all the time, then I don't think there would be any uh, issue pertaining to quarrels. There won't, there will be any issues which will lead to any kind of dispute. So if we perform our moral duties, if we perform our legal duties in a in a proper manner, then it will definitely be helpful for the peace and security. Then as a state, they are definitely there for the welfare state. As a welfare state, they are definitely there, which they perform a role as a protector, provider, entrepreneur, or economic controller, or as an arbitrator to empower the today's youth. So, but that youth, that individuals, that youth generation, which we have more in number in today's era, should get an opportunity to educate, prosper, and develop themselves about their responsibilities, duties, and rights towards the others, then it will lead to a progressive growth and healthy transformation at all level or of all individuals, irrespective of any country or any place where you go for work, where you go to settle, maybe as a migrant worker, maybe as a for the any other, uh, you can say the state, wherever you go. If you realize your duties, then obviously that will reflect for the uh, betterment of that society or that institution. So. So this is it at the end. So thank you once again. If uh, anything anyone would like to ask, they can uh, contribute. They can ask. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay, sir, for the lecture. We are really extremely grateful that you have delivered the lecture today. Thank you so much uh, for taking us through the jurisprudence aspect in the initial uh, stage of your lecture. Thank you for that. And thank you for emphasizing about the CEDA, that is a uh, convention on, uh, on the elimination of all the forms of discrimination against women. That is an important aspect in how we are, uh, as a country, um, emphasizing on the education specifically regarding the female gender. Uh, thank you so much for emphasizing on that. And also um, telling us about the importance of inculcating human rights courses in all the disciplines of education. Uh, I hope that, um, as you said, it will help us to be a better person, better human beings. Uh, thank you for the lecture session, sir. And I'd like to share one now incident so when i was in du i also used to go for outreaches legal outreaches and we used to like in islam areas and other uh, marginalized area of the uh, delhi and we used to uh, share how about the uh, free legal aid to the people there and how they can reach courts and how they can uh, fight their cases for free all those things we used to do and this reminds me that everybody needs to know about the uh, legal education human rights their rights so thank you for the session sir i'd like uh, anybody if you wants to ask any question please message in the chat box or one by one you can ask uh, yes Sibish. good afternoon sir oh sorry yes please ask Yes, good afternoon. Uh, so from the introduction uh, itself about you, we go to know that you have worked as a teaching associate of human rights education. Uh, we would like to know the practical difficulties in uh, educating the peoples in this manner. OK, OK, yeah. So so personally, when I was a part of this project of human education in Pune University, so therein, when I, I realized that uh, the people who are belonging from different streams. So if, when I uh, conducted certain session at the, for example, in the physics department, on the chemistry department, or in the computer science department, then I realized that these people are not very well aware about their basic rights. So for example, if they want to have to access any particular office or any particular government institution or any government offices, for example, then what things that they have to understand, what things they can claim for, what things they can ask for. So they are very well not that confident they are not very well you can have that uh, confidence with them that how we can approach towards it 
So if we have certain background about basic laws, if we get the background about basic rules, or at least how to process towards it. So for example, if I go to any government office, so how to communicate with them? So how can I contact with them? There are certain different challenges that one individual may face. So, but if they go through certain rules and regulation, and if they have that capacity just to understand those rules and regulation, how to search them, even that itself may empower them to get their work done, that empower them to politely get their work done because they are just showing them their rights. They are just showing their, showing their duties. So this is one. And second thing that if you understand your rights and duties, then as uh, even Roosevelt uh, statement all must have heard that human rights shall not basically uh, start from the education or start from the institution level. It basically starts from your own home. So if you uh, respect, if you maintain the dignity of individuals in your home or in your house, whatever the opinion they have, whatever the expression they have, then that itself basically gives us the uh, more understanding for the protection of the rights individual of the others. So nowadays we must we see the incidences like the honor killing for example or even no over the, in the so if we if they get the knowledge about such kind of areas so even that basically helps them so just to share in one more uh example that during the uh this project we also circulated the basic universal declaration of human rights document throughout the university to all the teaching and non-teaching staff so teaching staff okay we can understand that they are uh having good education but there are certain non teaching staff they may have, they may not having that uh, education so those document of this udhr that was translated into their vernacular language and that was circulated to all just to have the understanding that what are they possess what things exactly they have so that basically gives the sense of respect that gives the sense of dignity towards the others and that basically help for the better functioning in the university also in any institution okay yes um sir uh, basima has a question so uh, even after impa imparting legislation why some unwritten moral rules prevail over established constitutional principles okay uh actually uh, like the when... question yes yes i i read the question yes yes i found the question even after imparting legal education, why some unwritten moral rules prevail even over the established constitutional principles? Now, the, there are uh, always there is a tussle between the moral principles and the principles of the constitution. So, what has more what things that we need to recognize more? Then here, if you talk about the constitution itself, and if you go under the Article Twenty Five of the Constitution, then you will find that even the constitution, under the right of religion, has talked about the three important exception that is one is the public health public order and public morality so so morality is somewhere is going to be present always that and there is there will be a constant uh, you can say the change will be in the morality because in today's context what we understand as a right to privacy and in the context of the establishment or the adoption of the constitution what was the concept of right to privacy both are having a different you can say the perception both are having the different interpretation just because the change in the morality so morality will always be there but only the thing is that what is moral is subject to the uh you can say the context which we are living is subject to the zone in which we are living so what is moral in in india may not be moral in us or what is moral in us may not be moral in india or what was moral in the year 1947 or may not be moral today and what was immoral in the 20, 1947 may be moral today that's what we are experiencing so even the constitution has recognized morality so morality will always will be there only what is right and what is wrong that is subject to the change in the society that is subject to the individual understanding in the society that what they are going to accept in future so uh this living relationship may be moral today but still there are different opinions are there so legal education is definitely that we are trying to so this is what we are trying to impart that as a law student or as a law professional we need to uh understand what is 
no right what is wrong so that rationality we have to maintain maybe as a lawyer maybe as a judge maybe as an educator or maybe as a you can say the just advocacy uh in a, as being an advocate that we have to follow so therefore this morality will always be there to prevail over the established constitutional principle because this and the unwritten morality or written morality again there is a more debate because this the source of morality is always immemorial so for that purpose we need to have certain authenticate uh, principles and obviously those moral principles shall not directly violate any uh, fundamental rights or fundamental principle so yes there are uh, you can say uh, recognition is always will be there to the moral moral principles we cannot ignore them yes any other good evening sir yes good evening so i had a question so are there any measures at the national level for any kind of human right education that sensitizes individuals about the duties towards our society so any kind of uh, national or uh, legal education according to you uh, see like uh, when we talk about now as a at the national level if you talk about so as a so in the year 2015 to 19 or 2010 to 15 wherein they have aimed for the promotion of human rights education through the higher education or through this government institution or through this education institution so yes they are basically doing a work for the protection of human rights so such as as i mentioned the state university wherein the pune university for example they have initiated this course even i think if i am not wrong the university like pondicherry even they have started this course so through this education they are trying to inculcate this uh, principle of human rights education and even like at the national level if you refer the present national education policy if you go through then even that policy somewhere has tried to recognize the rights of every individual especially the linguistic right for example so when we try to understand the language then it is the duty of the state or even it is the duty of the individual that or as even government institution that they should plan their action in a such a way that the, the subject like constitution or introduction of subject and like even the constitution of india so it is not necessary that title should be human rights in all the way but title or the purpose should be that every individual should get the rights should get that uh, understanding of their rights and interest in a better manner so that they can contribute better so national education policy is one example which has basically at the national level has uh, not directly has you know human rights education title you can say that has contributed but yes it has contributed for the uh, growth of an individual so that they can because because as you know that when when we are in school for example so if we are if we understand the concept in our uh, native language or in our local language or in our a basic language then that is that gets more clarity than if you try to understand the concept in only in the you can say the english language for example or any common any other 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 language so if you so if that also gives that sense of uh, protection of education of rights right to education so therefore at national level i would say nep and certain education institution maybe state institution or the national institution they have try to inculcate this subject of constitution or human rights as a compulsory course in their curriculum yes thank you sir good evening sir uh, yes uh, so my question is uh, is it possible to impart such kind of sensitization towards the duty oriented society as we know that uh, the uh, definition of human rights education is nowhere used in the approach or anywhere so how can yes. we like universally make it true so that okay. people will be aware of it yes uh, actually see, that... yes 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 actually when you talk about the human rights and its universality there are obviously certain uh, you can say the advantage or disadvantage or plus or negative points are always there so when we talk about the human rights and its universality also there has been debate which has been started for the a uh, concept like cultural relativism if you have heard that concept cultural relativism wherein we say that that for example if if i migrated from india to us and my religion is something else maybe my religion is uh, uh, 
if, if I belong in another religion, which is not very, very majority in US. So if I perform in my rituals, if I perform my festivals in US, then that may create some annoyance to them, that may create some disturbance to them. So in this area, if if as a human rights, you can say promoter, as a human rights educator, if I go there and if I also hear some kind of disturbance or some kind of annoyance from the other country, then I may give that respect or I may give that understanding to that particular uh, situation. And I, I can respect, yes, if they have that uh, way of way to celebrate the festival. So as a migrant laborer, I should respect that and I should even support that and I should not interfere to create any kind of nuisance. So that is one benefit that we can have about the human rights education. But at the, as you have mentioned, is it really practicable or not? And yes, as a as a part of this uh, uh, project of this human rights education at the university level, then that has actually created some sense of you no know, understanding. So, like for example, if there are hundred students, so out of hundred, even if twenty or twenty five get sensitized about their rights, if they get sensitized about their, uh, yes, for example, if there are right such as if there is a marriage for example like honor killing if i take the simple example that every home that uh, has certain culture has certain tradition but even law has given has given the freedom to every individual that they can choose their partner they can choose their life partner and they have their rights so they can they have to take their own responsibility rather than creating any kind of uh, different interpretation so so in that sense even if that individual gives that sense then that can he can educate their uh, you can say the home family or their relatives and that can create a better society that can create a peaceful society so we are not trying to uh, change the uh, no transformation in a day but that can slowly create some you know, changes so as you can see the even the plan of united nation was in the four phases so initially it was the school then it was the college then it was media professional and now it is the youth empowerment so slowly they are trying to entering into every phase. So this is the good, you can say the area, if you uh, even research in detail, then that can also become a good empirical study, even for research in future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else has any question? Else we'll proceed uh, further. Okay, uh, I welcome Alan uh, to give word of thanks. And uh, Alan, please come. Uh, good evening to all. Myself, Alan Joe. It's my immense pleasure to give the proposed word of thanks to your grateful evening. On behalf of the entire institution, I would like to thank Dr. Ajay Sonawanesa, who, despite this busy schedule, has found time to give this operation and enlighten us with a valuable knowledge on human rights education for duty oriented society. On his overview to journey, the human rights from the Magna Carta to ICCPR, then classified the discrimination direct and indirect, then mentioned the Professor Harald J. Lasky about the interrelationship between rights and duties, then human rights education related about the knowledge and awarenesses. Then he mentioned the UN plan of action on inclusive and equitable quality education. Then he mentions the articles on your various conventions. And finally, he mentioned the different spaces of human rights education of the four spaces. I thank you, sir, for the well awarded program for that. And once again, I thank you for the addressing the all questions with your patience, sir. Then we are grateful to our coordinator, Department of Law, UK, Dr. Basavaraj Shem Kupaburi, and Dr. Arnold Sinsho, coordinator of IQUSC, for initiating this human rights law lecture series and giving us an opportunity to learn more about human rights in various perspectives. And last but not least, I thank you all the faculties, research scholars, UG and PG students from participating and showing the interest on these sessions. Once again, I thank you once and all. Stay connected. Again, we will join tomorrow. Thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you, Ajay, sir. Participants, please fill the feedback and also share the WhatsApp group. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ajay. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Pleasure to listen. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.